I know we disagree on a lot of issues, but hearing you talk about menstrual cycles, conception, how long you know when your how you know when your egg is fertilized or having a baby, I got to tell you, it really disgusts me. That was South Carolina Senator Katrina Sheely during, uh, you know, making an impassioned speech about a an abortion bill. So now, uh, look, uh, she is she's a Republican uh, and a very conservative one at that. But even at this point, she is not in favor of the incredibly restrictive ban that is going on that is being debated in South Carolina. So now South Carolina is one of the states that is working to completely ban abortion in its entirety and uh, without including any exceptions for rape and incest. So now this follows, of course, the end of Roe v. Wade. And while most Republicans in the state legislature do support that ban, including Sheely, by the way, uh, and I'll show her, uh, I'll show your, her voting record uh, later on. Uh, but nonetheless, that has caused some drama playing out concerning these exceptions. So now first, uh, let me note that lawmakers have already made two uh, attempts to get exemptions or rape and incest back into this bill and have yet failed. One would allow abortions for pregnancies caused by rape or incest up to six weeks after conception and another up to 20 weeks. However, for Republicans, uh, including GOP's three female senators, um, well, they're not in favor of just passing a blanket ban. They don't agree with the blanket ban, and so there's a very good, very high likelihood that they will tank the bill as it is. They will not allow this to go forward, which would have, uh, of course, uh, default to the state's 20-week abortion ban, which they had under Roe. So that said, I want to show you more of Sheely here uh, talking about it. I do not want anyone in this room making life and death decisions for me, my daughter, my granddaughter, and for that fact, anyone. I also do not want the person I choose as my medical professional to stop in the middle of a procedure and request the South Carolina Code of Laws to decide if he can proceed or if he may be committing a crime punishable by a fine or time in prison. If you want to believe that God is wanting you to push a bill through with no exception that kills mothers and ruins the lives of children, lets mothers bring home babies to bury them, then I think you're miscommunicating with God, or maybe you're just not communicating with him at all. I know we disagree on a lot of issues, but hearing you talk about menstrual cycles, conception, how long you know when your how you know when your egg is fertilized or having a baby, I gotta tell you, it really disgusts me. I really don't think there are but five of us that sit in this chamber that can even speak on those issues honestly. I don't even believe your wives would agree that you know how it feels. But before I sit down, I have one thing to say to you. Think about your wives. Think about your daughters, your granddaughters, your nieces, and all those cute little girls' faces in your church. Then think about the decisions you want to make for them. All right, so look, there's a lot that I liked in that speech. Again, I'm going to disagree you know, with the, the religious stuff. I, I don't believe in that, but hey, if you want to talk about that, that's fine. Um, but I do like how she pointed out how on a lot of these abortion bans, especially the, the complete blanket bans, there seems to be only men making these decisions as if women are not able to make their own. And that's kind of the whole point. It's about control, and it's always been about control. It's never been about life. At the very least, you would have exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. And a lot of these bills, unfortunately, do not. And they make it very murky, by the way, uh, of when you can actually do an intervention, a medical intervention, in order to save the life of the mother. And so that, that is an issue with a lot of these bans. Now, that said, trying to pass a bill with no exceptions, I mean, again, that's incredibly extremist. That, isn't, that is the most extremist uh, position that you could take. 
again, what you're saying, if you support that, is if you're saying you want little girls, some as young as 10 years old, to be forced to go through pregnancy, give birth, which is traumatic enough, and raise a baby. Okay? And that's in, just in case of rape. In the case of incest, it would be a family member. A family member's baby. Again, uh, children, I don't know. I, I don't think 10-year-olds should be, you know, changing diapers uh, for their own kids. They should be, you know, playing with dolls and watching cartoons, not raising babies. And by the way, that's an extreme example, but it does happen. And even without that extreme example, again, there's no reason I think the government should be forcing anyone to carry a pregnancy that they don't want. Being, uh, I don't know, pro-choice, allowing women to make a choice, supporting Roe, that's actually not the extreme position. That's the, that's the normal position. And yet, I'm to the left of her on that. Still, this is interesting to see. And again, there is a lot to like in that speech and her making a powerful case. Again, if only she would be in favor of going back and protecting a woman's right to choose, uh, at least under the old rules of Roe. But here we have a case, another case, where you have Republicans who consider themselves 100% pro-life saying, no, no, we're, we're not in favor of a complete and total ban on abortions. Sure, I may have said that before in the campaign trail, but now oh, I'm running away from that position. I, again, yesterday is a good example. I talked about Scott Jensen, who had vowed to ban abortion back in March and then released an ad just recently saying, oh, do, 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 did I say that? I didn't say that. No, no, no. Uh, the abortion... In Minnesota, is a protected constitutional right. No governor can change that. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to change it. Now, the reason that we've seen this 180 is because that position, the position of complete and total abortion bans with no exceptions, is deeply unpopular. Overturning Roe was deeply unpopular. Jensen himself went from losing by about five points to being crushed by about 18 points in the polls. He looked at that and said, oh, my God, what have I done? I have made a terrible mistake. Uh, and look, it's not just uh, Jensen. There are other races, of course, where uh, Republicans were expected to do well or even win. And then, oh, look, since uh, Democrats ran in a pro-choice platform. They ended up winning some of these elections. And then, of course, you had uh, the issue in Kansas. Kansas is not a blue state. But you had um, a ballot initiative that was defeated that would have allowed the state to go and do a full ban on abortion. So, look, I'm not surprised by this result. And I don't think anyone else should be surprised as well. And I think a lot of conservatives, though, were shocked. For one because they were actually able to overturn Roe. I don't think a lot of them actually expected that to happen. Um, but I think they're even more surprised by the backlash that they've received from the voters. Again, make no mistake here. Sheely is deeply conservative. She's a right-wing Republican. She voted for the rest. She voted with the rest of the Republicans for the original heartbeat bill, the abortion ban. Again, uh, something that I would consider to be extreme, and I think most of the country would consider extreme as well. In fact, here's some of her voting record, right? Prohibits abortion after fetal heartbeat is detected. She uh, voted yes on that and was a co-sponsor and prohibited abortions after 20 weeks uh, back in 2016. So she doesn't have a super progressive record uh, at, at all, an incredibly conservative record. And yet here she is saying, you have gone too far. Men in this legislature, you have gone way too far. This is not what we signed up for. So it's very, very clear that a lot of these very, very far right wingers have miscalculated. They've went way too far and now they're trying to reel it back. The only question is, Will they be able to? Because now the road's gone. These abortion bans, 
well, they're active in a lot of states already. The places that have the, uh, uh, the trigger laws. And others are, again, trying to, trying to make these bans happen. And so this is not, this is not like, oh, we're just going to do this for, you know, we're going to have this uh, vote on pro-life, you know, uh, to do politics with it and to say, oh, look, we're, we're, we're pro-life, but it doesn't actually apply because, of course, Roe is going to block it. No, 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 this is real and it's having real consequences for women and pregnant people all across the country. And so I think this is a, a very clear situation of be careful what you wish for because it might actually come true and it will come and bite you in the ass.